What's up everybody? Week number two of how to tie the specific knot. Now this week we're diving into my top water knot and this is a thing like I throw a loop knot a decent amount but it's only certain different applications and so we're gonna dive into that right now. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do when we start to talk about this loop knot is normally I am using a loop knot on top water lures. Okay, so let me open this guy up real quick here. I'll show you. These are actually two of my favorites. These are 13 fishing hard baits. This is actually a, a dual pitch. Uh, actually, I think it's a 94. So it's dual pitch 94. And the reason why I like this little guy right here is he's a small walking bait and I can put two big giant number two trebles on him. So the reason why I don't throw two hook top water walking baits in general is because I, at least unless it's this size, I like to throw a three hook just so it gives me a better chance. Now, if I'm throwing around a really heavy cover, I throw this bait just because ultimately two big hooks is sometimes better than three smaller hooks. Okay, now I'm gonna grab these two guys out real quick and I'm gonna talk to you why. Now I use a loop knot in other different applications as well, like uh, more so like a, a new technique that I learned was like tight lining. Um, and so the big key is when you tie a loop knot, you want, it's, it's basically one pivot point. So you, it's, it's like, you can do two different things. So it depends on what you want to go through. This is actually a Poppy McPop base. You guys have heard me talk about this bait on the channel. This is like by far my favorite popping style bait. Um, that I've come across in the last couple years that I just, I, it's unreal. The reason why I like it so much, I think it's like six or seven dollars, maybe eight dollars, I don't know. Um, the reason I like this bait so much is because it chugs really well and it walks really well. So like if I'm like trying to do two different things in one and that's why I like this bait, I don't have to change it. So that's, that's another reason. Anyway, so the difference between these two baits right here one has a pivot point already tied, already ready to roll, which you can tie straight to that split ring, which a split ring basically acts as a loop knot. So where this dual pitch does not, you basically just want one pivot point and that's what I, I tend to do. Like I'll use this on my crappy jig. Sometimes I'll tie a loop knot where ultimately like it has a little bit of action in, in the bait, especially when I'm throwing like a, a little fluke style bait. So. What I'll do with my loop knot, and this is a long time ago, what I, I what it's worked for me really well. Normally, I won't throw straight braid with a loop knot. This is just for application to show you guys what it, what it looks like. Um, I'll, I'll normally use a fluorocarbon leader, uh, which I, I think it works better. And the issue is when you're throwing in a top water, a lot of times when you throw a straight braid to uh, to to for your pivot point, you end up actually getting a lot of that braid wrapped around um, your front hook. So that's the reason why I won't use straight braid. I'll use a, actually a fluorocarbon or a fluorocarbon leader or a monofilament leader. So first thing you're going to do when tying the loop knot is actually making a loop. So you make a loop and you don't want to cinch it down. So you're going to bring that down your deal so you can hopefully see that. It's sort of how it's going to look right there. The big key with the loop knot is as I go through here, it's super simple trying to get it to where I can actually see it right here. I'm actually gonna swap to this camera just because, let me stop from moving, because it's just harder to get you exactly the, the point of view of what I'm looking at. It's like when I bring it way out here, you know, it's a little bit easier right here. So, what I'm gonna do again, tie this guy, put a loop in him, sorry. Put a loop like that, put it through the eye of the bait, Get him down there. One, two, three, four times. Then ultimately going, bringing that tag in and going back through that loop. It's a little coarse because it's a 65 pound braid. Now the big key with this is the tension. Well, I'm getting it messed up a little bit. I'm gonna do it again. One, two, three, four. Put it through that loop. And 
Okay. Okay, so I, I put it through that loop. The key with the loop knot, um, and it's it's been a little while since I've tied it, because I, I tend to over time that loop knot like that, which is actually the perfect distance. It takes a little bit of time to get it right. And so I'll tie it one more time for y'all, but that's about what you want it to look like. I did it four times, four wraps, and I'll, I'll show you guys right here. Four wraps. Um, and you want that distance about the size, you can see it's a little bit larger of a loop than an O-ring. So it gives you a little bit more of a free swinging action. But the issue is, um, I I've personally not had an issue with breaking this, this, this knot. Um, but where you're gonna have an issue with, and I've seen it happen, is the end of where, if you tie, if you catch a lot of big ones on it, what I mean by that is, Say I'm throwing 20 pound monofilament, um, which is a line that I throw a lot for four car or for top waters. Um, your issue is that you have so much stress on the back of that knot right there, depending on what your, your little ring looks like that's connecting to your bait, if it's real thin, a lot of times you can break that. So that's what you really gotta pay attention to because that kinks it. And say you're swinging three pounders overboard and you're catching them every cast or you're catching quite a few of them in a day, you will have to retie that loop knot to make sure that you don't have an issue with that. Um, so I'll do it one more time. And sort of, it, it, it's sort of, it, it's a pretty easy knot. It's just a loop four wraps around the line above the loop. A loop, just like, let me grab a little bit more line. A loop just like this. And sort of, and, and the big, definitely the big key is getting the distance of that, of that bait. So I'm gonna go ahead and put him back through the ring. I'm gonna wrap him around sort of hard because I want to make sure y'all can see this three, four times is what I normally tend to do, especially with heavier pound line. And then I'll put this through and you'll see it's come up there. The key is getting that knot down at the perfect, cinching down at the perfect deal. And I'm not master this by any means. So I'm going to, it's a little easier to break because the braid will slip. I'm just tightening them up. Sorry y'all. I'm grabbing that, I might have tightened him a little bit too much. But you'll see, I'll show you right here too, you basically, the, the nice thing about braid is you have a little bit more slippage where you don't have that with a monofilament. So it takes a little bit of time to get that exact knot. Now the only thing I don't like how that knot set up right there because it's a little bit kinked up, but it seems like to me, um, I even even when the knot looks weird, I've tested it, it seems to hold up just fine. It just like I said, again, you really have to pay attention to the back of that knot to where it doesn't kink your line and ultimately um, over a, a day of fishing it, end up breaking. It tends not to break the knot, it tends to break the back line. So the loop knot is definitely one you might wanna add to your, to your deal. Um, it's definitely a knot that you might want to add to your deal. The loop knot is 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 great for topwater applications um, and, and multiple others. But this is a knot that I've learned when I was 18 years old. I still use it. Uh, it's, I'm not saying it's the best loop knot out there. I'm sure there's different ways to tie it. But it's what works for me ultimately. And hopefully you guys learned a little bit on this one. This is definitely, hey, topwater fishing is what I love to do. And adding and parting action it to your bait definitely is important. So loop knot 101. All right, so hopefully y'all enjoyed that one. The loop knot is definitely one that can be a little bit on the easier side of tie, but it's gonna take a little bit of time to master it, okay? Definitely getting that size of that, that loop down there is something it takes a little bit of time, but you can do that, hey, so in the winter time, allows you to have a little bit of time to mess around with that. Get good at tying knots, definitely play around with this when you're on your off time or if you have a rainy day, Wind's blowing, mess around with this. It's definitely practice makes perfect. Next week, we have a completely different knot for a different application. We'll see you guys there.